So that was our oil cooler installation. That was our oil cooler new sill installation. Oh boy. That was our oil cooler installation video. I didn't want to say that. Welcome back to the community, everybody, and thank you for being part of it. If you get a chance, drop down in the description. You can make a small donation to help keep the channel going, and also there's t-shirts and stickers available. Okay, today what are we going to do? We are going to take the oil cooler, disassemble it, we're going to flush it out and clean it. That's very important to do, okay? And also we're going to put new seals in. I'm going to show you what I use on the seals to seat them properly. And then we're going to show you how to torque it down and go over a couple of tips along the way, as I always do. And towards the end of the video, I got something to show you that got shipped to me. I'm pretty excited about it, so we're going to have a lot of fun with it. So, okay, hang tight, sit back, get something to drink. I'll be right back. Okay, so you notice now that the engine block is cleaned up. It's about 90% clean. I'm going to do a little bit more cleaning on it. Uh, I got to do the inside where the cylinders slide in. Not a big deal. And uh, I'm going to use a green Scotch Bite Bright Pad uh, to do that with a little bit of brake clean. Uh, but otherwise, it's nice and cleaned up. The top of it can use a little more cleaning. Uh, not a big deal. You seen me remove the oil cooler last week. Just lift up on it. I had to set here. I didn't know if oil would come out. And let's have a little education. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to disassemble, take it apart. We're going to flush it out because the oil was a little dirty in this motor. So we want it to be right. And I'm going to show you what to use on the seals before you put them in and how to torque them properly. So let's All do right. it. I forgot to charge my GoPro. So you're not going to be as up and personable, but I'll move the camera around to where you can see really well. So there's not an issue. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is we need to separate the stand from the cooler take this apart. We're going to flush it good. Okay. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take a little wire brush. We're going to clean the threads up. You want these clean before you PB blast it. I, I always bring this up when we're doing stuff like this. Okay. It's best to do because you get the loose stuff out of the way. So once you have those all cleaned up, uh, 10 millimeter bolts. So we're going to go ahead Give them a little squirt. There we go. So now those are cleaned up. Let's take them Just off. A little 10 millimeter socket. These have been on there since 1974. So be nice to them. Make sure that you save all your washers. There's two wavy washers on here. So that's kind of weird. I didn't think they had two. Maybe they do. I never ran into that. Okay. See how nice you wire wheel, or I'm sorry, wire brush them, and they just come right off. That one had one. Nope, two. There is a flat washer and a wavy, a little wavy washer. Okay. Don't lose your Hoover bit here. Don't lose this. This is very important. Don't lose it, don't lose it, don't lose it. That directs the airflow, okay? So we'll put that aside for right now. And we'll get our nuts and washers off to one side. Okay. They all had two washers on them. For some reason, I didn't know that they did that. We're gonna separate this. And it's stuck together, of course. Okay, I know what to do. No worries. Put a nut on just like a turn. It's been together for too long. Okay, let me get a small hammer. Now don't be a jerk and hit it hard. Just tap it lightly like that, okay? all you do take the nut back off and 
the other nut. There is another washer. What the heck? Why there's so many washers on this? Who knows? All right. Now we have separated. Okay. And you see there's two washers in here. Last week I had screwed up and said two or one up here. It's actually two. So, uh, they look corroded there like they were leaking. Very, very possible. But I'm going to step away for a minute and I'll be back in three seconds. I'm going to clean these up real quick and then we'll do the flushing of it. Be right back. Now, something I forgot to add to this. If you wonder why I'm putting the oil cooler on now and I didn't put the pistons and the jugs and the heads because the two nuts that go underneath the oil cooler that's exactly what we want to torque properly okay and i'm going to bring you up close before we mount it and show you something you have to be careful of so let's get back on the cooler all right so i cleaned the surfaces up right here is what i did because nobody's going to see this it's sitting inside and i also cleaned the surface is up around here where it's going to mount. You know what I mean? You can sit there and polish it, but as soon as you put the fan shroud over it, you're never going to see it again. So, okay, let's take a little pick or a screwdriver and get these seals out. Okay. You have four of them. These ones were whoop, smashed pretty good. Yeah, they were. It might have been over tightened a little bit. And we'll go over to torque specs in a second. Okay, so I'm going to clean out here and here. Okay, but first, what we're going to do, we're going to flush this out. I want to make sure that, uh, you know, there's not a lot of dirty oil or sludge or anything in it. So let's do that now. I'm going to spray some brake clean inside of here. Okay, and I want to sprayed back on me. Let it get up through there. Now I am going to go ahead and use my airline. Now don't be a jerk and turn your air up to like a thousand PSI or something. You know what I mean? Just keep it reasonable. That's coming out yet. Let me see here. This is going to be hard for you to really watch, watch, but I'll do the best I can. Yeah, it's coming out dirty. Okay, give me a second. I'll readjust the camera for you. Probably should have kept the adapter on and did it or used some different liquid in it. Alrighty, I can hear it in there. There we go. <coughs> okay. I hope you can see this. I'm trying to do it to where you can see. There is a lot coming out. All you're doing is filling one end and putting your air in the other and blowing it through. So let's it's filled up pretty good this time. I want to get it nice and clean because the oil was really black. So we want to get it cleaned up really good. And you can hear it in there moving around. Okay, we're gonna I know it's hard to see on camera, but you get the idea of what I'm doing. I'm going to do one more run. I have some other chemicals, but I don't really want to put too much crap inside of this. Okay. I'm out clean now. There we go. There we go. 
Now you flushed it out basically. Maybe this wasn't as bad as I thought it was, but I definitely wanted to make sure it was clean. There we go. Okay, now that should be pretty clean. It was just so black, I wanted to make sure I flushed something through it. So, okay. Now remember, when you're doing that, don't get crazy and turn your compressor up real high. You'll blow your oil cooler out. So let's open our bag of seals. The owner uh, bought a complete seal kit, which was good. Okay. So we have a lot of different seals here. I'm not going to go over all of them, but I'll show you something. These four seals, the thinner ones, are the ones you're going to use. These, I believe, are for type 4. I'm almost positive. These are for the older ones. Let me see here. Okay. Here, let me, let me try something a minute here. When you're checking these, if you want to know or if you're new to this, okay, take a 10 millimeter wrench. I'm going to bring you down on top of them. This is for, by the way, a 1600 dual port AS41 dual relief. Okay. See how the 10 millimeter, see how it fits perfect to the hole? Okay. The ones that don't belong are eights. And let me see here if I can get you in. I'll put it to one side. See how it's smaller than the 10 millimeter? So you want the ones for this motor to line up with the 10 millimeter. I hope it showed up in the camera properly. So now that we've gone that far, I'm going to move these others out of the way here and he can use them on something else because he has some older beetles. Okay. Now, what I'm going to put on the seals is dielectric grease, okay? Don't put, uh, the reason I use the dielectric grease, and I brought this up in other videos, is it doesn't corrode rubber, so it won't corrode the seals, but it'll help in aiding them to seat properly and move slightly while they're being seated. So you don't want to use wheel bearing grease, chassis grease, whatever you want to call it. You don't want to use silicon or sealers. Some people use aviation sealer on it. Uh, if you feel better doing that, go ahead. I personally don't like doing that. So let's put them together first and let me do something real quick here. All right, I cleaned them up a little bit better uh, where the seal is supposed to sit. So what we're going to do is take our dielectric grease we're going to, whoop, I grabbed the wrong one. There it is. Only me. Let me bring you in even closer. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get it around these seals. Don't buy cheap seals. Buy good quality. These seem kind of hard to me, but it is what it is. Uh, okay. Put a little more in there. You want to lubricate it a little. You want it to be able to move around while it's trying to seat. Okay, so we have them set. Let me get my little torque wrench. Okay, first we'll go ahead and we will put this together. Now don't go tilting this like that because your sills are going to fall out. So keep it upright. You've already cleaned everything, right? Okay. We're going to go ahead and start putting the nuts on. Now, one thing I wanted to remind you of, when you put these together, take a look and make sure the seals are seated. You'll be able to tell by looking at them, okay? So let's take our washers. I'm going to put these three on the bottom, just like we're on there. Don't know why they did that. Actually, two, because there's not enough thread there. That's weird. We have a wavy washer and one that fell on the floor. All right. Let's try it again. 
flat washer first, wavy washer. We'll need a 10 millimeter socket. I'm only going to snug it temporarily. Don't, don't go crazy because you're going to have to torque it properly. Okay. Now I'm going to get my handy dandy torque wrench. These are to go to five foot pounds. However, I'm going to use my quarter inch ratchet. My quarter inch torque wrench, I'm sorry. And we are going to set it to 60 inch pounds, not foot pounds, 60 inch pounds. Okay, which equals five foot pounds. So let me do that. Okay, let me get you in focus here. As you can see, 60 inch pounds. You don't want to go crazy on these, okay, because you will break them studs. So we're going to go ahead, take the extension off. You don't want an extension because it changes the torque value. Okay, so let's do 60 inch pounds. There we go. These smaller ones like this for inch pounds, it's actually a little harder to hear the click. So you almost got to feel the click. I don't know if you'll hear it. So I'll be quiet. There we go. Come on. There we go. And don't go no further, okay? You want it right to five foot pounds or 60 inch pounds. You don't want to go berserk on them, okay? So let me move stuff around here. But I promised to show you I forgot. That is your, that's your Hoover bit is what I call it. Make sure that is on right. That's how it seats on the engine. Okay. And it goes that way. I hope that makes sense to you. Okay. So let's get ready to mount it to the I'm motor. Take this brush here. Just clean that a little. Okay. I'm going to blow this out one more time. Okay. I didn't want to blow nothing on the camera. What I am going to do real quick here is take a rag and stuff it over that hole. You don't want nothing going inside the engine after you've gotten this far. Let's go ahead and lubricate these seals up. These are hard. I don't like that very much. I hope they were L-Ring brand because they're hard as a rock which doesn't impress me. Okay. So we've got them all lubed up so they seat into place easier. So you have your seals in place. We're going to go ahead. Now make sure that you've cleaned these out really well. Okay. So go ahead, set this down. Let's take a wavy washer, set it on here. Start this nut. It's hard to not get in your way momentarily. Okay. And I'll bring you around the other side. We got to start the other two. Let's take some rags and put them in these holes. You don't want it going into the motor. As fun as it sounds to have to fish one out, you don't want to do that. That way if they fall, they'll just fall right there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start the two on here. So don't forget your flat washer and your nut. I guess you can't forget the nut, huh? Now this is a lot harder with the jugs on. I guess you see now what I'm doing. Lots harder. 
Lots harder. This way we can torque it properly. I mean, it can be done with the jugs on. I've done them before that way. It's just not as exciting. Alrighty. So let me snug them up just slightly. Okay. Oh, I think I'll fit that way. I just want to snug them a little bit. And then I'll use the torque wrench. Okay, you can see that one's... Loosened up. Come on, get on there. This, wrench, this set of wrenches I got are new for some reason. They almost feel like they need broke in, if that makes any sense. They're kind of tight on everything. I like doing it with a wrench when I'm just snugging because I feel like I won't over tighten it then. Okay, let me back with up a me. minute. Snug this one down a little more. Then we're going to get our torque wrench set. And after that, I'll show you what came for me in the mail. That we're going to have fun with. Okay, let me readjust. We are going to set our torque wrenches to 14 foot pounds, not inch pounds, foot pounds. So we're going to go ahead, listen for to click. Okay, we're going to turn the engine, and I am going to show you something important in a moment. See, without the jugs in the way, let's try to do them equally if possible. Okay, let's go back to there. Listen for to click. Hmm. Let me make sure this didn't spin on me. Nope, it didn't. 14 foot pounds. There we go. And there we go. And what I'm going to do is double check with my other torque wrench because that's how I roll. I'm going to use my metered one. Okay, it's at 15 and 15. Let's stand her up and there we go. You want to watch this? This is my old one. Now, I may not be centered under the lens, but you're just pulling lightly. You don't pull too hard, and you get it to stop, and we are at 15. So that's fine. We just don't want to overdo it and smash the seal. I know, I have too many tips and advice. I can assure you I'm not trying to bore you. Uh, when you are done, whether it's winter, summer, it don't matter. With your torque wrenches, when you're done, unload them. If you have it set to 10 pound, 30 pound, 80 pound, 100 pound, I think I have one that goes to 250 pound. Turn them down to zero. Let that spring unload. Do not store your torque wrenches where the spring, I believe it's a spring in there, is compressed. In a nutshell, unload them down to zero when they're when you're storing in them and not using them. Okay? Sorry, I had to had to tell you that because it was okay, on the Okay, so we flushed it out, we cleaned it, we put new seals in it. And there's something I want to show you, okay? And you got to be careful with this. One thing you have to be careful of, and this is why I say, with the threads coming off of the oil cooler housing, clean these threads up really good, okay? If you don't, and the threads are clogged, and you're trying to tighten the nut up, you can break these ears off of the block, yes. You don't want that to happen. I'm talking about these, the casting right there. Okay, so clean the threads up very, very good. One other thing that you do need to know about torquing, okay? If you're using a deep well socket, it changes the torque value slightly. If you're using extensions, like a four, six, eight inch extension on your, on your torque wrench, that changes your torque value also. 
So bear in mind, when you start adding adapters on, say you wanted the ratchet down here and you're reaching way up in, that changes the torque value. If you choose to use Loctite or any type of uh, grease on the threads, which I do not recommend on an oil cooler, I'm just giving you a tip, you will change the torque value. Okay, so people sometimes will anti-seize their spark plugs. I don't, depending on the vehicle. But when you put anti-seize on the spark plugs, then the torque value changes. And oftentimes people will over tighten them. So, okay, I know I, I went down a rabbit hole there, but it was on my mind. So I had to spit it out. Our oil cooler is installed. Okay, there's your seals. I torqued them to the proper spec. So they shouldn't leak. I mean, I did the best I could do, but I did them the way the Bentley calls for. So that's done. Let's take a peek and talk about what came, and then I'm going to let you go back to your life. So what do we have here? An ultrasonic cleaner. I know, driving you nuts with these, aren't I? Uh, the one that I had before was from Harbor Freight. It was a two and a half liter, so it wasn't very big. Probably good for doing small tolls, things like that, but it did work well. Uh, a company reached out to me and said to me, would you like to try our ultrasonic cleaner and do a review on it and an honest review? This one here is the 30 liter, eight gallon. So I should be able to fit pretty large products in there like a cylinder head, crankshaft. Uh, we're gonna do quite a few things with it. I'm pretty excited because of the capacity with it. Absolutely. So the 30 liter ultrasonic cleaner is gonna be a blast because we're gonna put cylinder heads in it and who knows what else, it's big. So it'll really give us a lot of room to work. I'm excited about trying it. I'll unbox it and do the whole episode, season one, and go ahead and uh, show it and see how well it works. I was excited to get the large one. Now the company did ask me, oh, do you have a lot of viewers that may be purchasing, you know, or even a couple? And I said, yeah, probably, most likely. So I asked them for a promo code so that you guys can get a discount if you do want it. I make nothing on this. So if you don't buy it, you don't buy it. If you do, then good for you. I don't know what it'll be, maybe 10 or 20% off. I'm not sure. They'll be emailing me the promo code soon. So, okay. I hope everybody had a great day. I hope you all learned something today. See you tonight.